Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Roger Bailey. I'm a radio host, teacher, board member at Bucks Rock Camp. I started off as a staff kid in 1978. My mom worked in the sewing shop, and then I moved through all the ranks from camper to staff and settled into radio, my one-time profession. As a lifelong Bucks Rock Camp attendee, I'm both forever grateful for what the camp has given me and so excited for what this new era has in store. But first, let's set the stage a little bit. 80 years ago, in 1942, Bucks Rock started as a place of refuge for students in the midst of a war, and since then has seen a few different phases in its lifetime. Throughout every generation, however, the campus served as a place for young people to express themselves. Originally, this was through farming, gardening, building, with arts as a fun side activities. But over time, however, the campers became more and more interested in the artistic parts of the program which eventually grew into the vibrant visual and performing arts program we have to this day. Each summer we're joined by campers age 10 to 17 looking to experience, create, and find empowerment through the creative and performing arts. All students have the opportunity to explore everything from video production, glass blowing, gardening, to theater and dance, each engaging in their own craft. But that's where the similarities from summer to summer end because each summer is unique because each year is its own adventure, guided by our campers' willingness to dive into the curriculum and by our dedicated staff ever evolving to meet the needs of this community. In short, Bucks Rock is a safe space where young people are given the tools and independence to grow into whatever they want and need to be. And to get here, we've undergone some incredible changes too. In 2020, we officially became a nonprofit organization and welcomed a new president. And in 2021, we set up a diversity, equity, and inclusion council. This council, chaired and run by years-long members of the Bucks Rock community, have been working hard to expand the reach of our camp. It's crucial that we invite an even bigger, more diverse group of campers and staff into this new chapter. And the DEI council and the board of directors are turning that goal into a reality. Last summer, we launched our fully online program, Bucks Rock Studios, meeting our students where they were in their homes. In putting together over 200 virtual workshops, we learned that our camp, just like our campers, is adaptable and resilient. It's safe to say that there's so much more to come, so many more young people to inspire, and even more art to create, which is why we're here today. And in that spirit, it is my great honor to introduce our new president, Antonia Steinberg. Antonia has spent 11 summers at Bucks Rock, growing from camper to counselor in that time. She has been a guiding force in this new vision of the camp, working tirelessly to set up this nonprofit to survive for generations to come. And all this while still building furniture at RISD. Under her incredible leadership, the sky's truly the limit. Everyone, Antonia Steinberg. Hi, I'm Antonia Steinberg, she, her, hers pronouns, president of Bucks Rock Camp. I remember my first summer. I was 10 years old. And I wrote a song about heartbreak, which was something I knew a lot about back then. <laughs> um, I performed it at Rock Cafe in front of all my new friends, all the counselors I looked up to. And I was met with cheers. The next summer, I combined my interests in wood and leather to make a pair of clogs for my mom, which have still never been worn, but hold a very special place in her closet. Um, until later years, I was bringing home furniture. Bucks Rock is where I had the realization that the world is made up of ideas and creative expressions. This aha moment was when I really started asking how things are made, why things are made, and it gave me the motivation to participate in the making of the world around me. Watching my peers perform and hearing them play music together was so inspiring. All of us met by so much enthusiasm and support was the first time I felt like I was a part of something big, the co-creating of a community. Bucks Rock has been a resource that keeps on giving, not only the friendships I cherish and the skills I gained, but also the confidence and curiosity that fuels me. All of that and the fundamental knowledge that Bucks Rock is a supportive and collaborative culture where young people can dare to try new things. 
All of that is what ultimately gave me the courage to step into this role. And it is my honor to serve something I believe so strongly in. Now that I am president of this organization, it is my purpose to lead it into the future and ensure that more kids have access to this opportunity. Box Rock has an 80 year legacy, but this is our first year as a not for profit. Our board is made up of alum rooted in the past and dedicated to the future, to passing the magic of Bucks Rock forward, sharing it and securing its future through fundraising events like this one. Thank you all for coming tonight to an evening of testimonials, creative expressions, but most of all, our shared love of this unique, inspired, beloved, and totally special place called Bucks Rock. At Bucks Rock, I found my people. I found people who were like me, people who thought like me, who were creative like me, and it changed my life. There was something magical about you could be your own person this week or that week or today or tomorrow, but there was a sense of community always. It's a beautiful thing that this that it flows through uh, so many generations. And if you talk to another Bucks Rocker from a different generation, the characters may change, but the story does remain the same. I am a second generation box rocker. My dad and his siblings were there back in the 60s. There are very few places in the world where you get to experiment with being who you are with zero chance of being sort of judged or, or given a hard time about it. Um, and so it's truly wonderful in that way. I went to Bucks Rock in 1954 and 1955. So as a result, I had direct contact with Ernst and Ilsa Bulova. And uh, the most meaningful part of being a camper at Bucks Rock was it was in stark contrast to the camp that I had prior gone to. What really struck me about Bucks Rock, other than the just plethora of activities and uh, expertise on hand uh, was the way people interacted with each other and the amount of respect that was afforded to the kids who went there. And I think more than anything, uh, that's what's really stuck with me over the years. I was at Bucks Rock from 1977 and 1978 as a camper, but I went from being a camper to a counselor. And, and truthfully, the rewarding part of my life at Bucks Rock was being staff. So much of who I am and what I do and, and how I react to people and deal with people all is because of this place. Even as a counselor, you, you still get to experience the camp and this idea that you, as a teacher, are just learning alongside the kids sometimes in the best ways of educational practice. It's so magical to be in a place where over here people are doing glass blowing and over here people are painting and down behind there they're putting on a show. and. What's so magical about camp is that it's this beautiful place in the woods where you can experiment and make art. There's no judgment, you know, whether you like to play sports or you don't, whether you like to dance and sing or you don't. There is a place for people at Bucks Rock, for every interest. Bucks Rock is an amazing place for you to really find yourself and find like-minded people and really get to explore what you are interested in. And Buck Rock just changed my life. It gave me a chance to express myself in many different ways. Like one of my favorite classes was glass blowing. Being a young black male from Chicago in the, in the hood, you don't really glass blow. You don't know what that is. I probably wouldn't have the confidence um, or the courage to work on my art had it not been for the foundations I got at Bucks Rock. It's that magical kind of place where you just feel so comfortable about who you are that you don't care what other people say, think, or do. You're just you. It was my first experience meeting other kids who are LGBT. It was my first experience meeting uh, other sort of introverted theater kids who really come out of their own when they're given a chance. Um, and more than anything, those experiences taught me how to interact with people with respect and I've carried that through into my professional life. For me as an educator now, I am the head of art and design at an elite private school down in Sydney, Australia. 
it definitely had a big part in forming my belief system as well as a core knowledge base of a lot of different art forms. I am currently a multi-artist, which I am an actor, a stand-up comedian, and a recording artist. So that all started at Bucks Rocks Camp because I was able to um, express myself in a way that I haven't before. My career literally took off from my last summer in Bucks Rock. And the amazing thing as I worked through the photography industry and the tech industry is how many Bucks Rockers I would run into. My high school had some programming classes, but nothing like what Bucks Rock offered. And that's definitely really shaped my career. After going to Bucks Rock, I wanted to do something with 3D animation, but something with like web development. And my college, uh, RIT in Rochester, New York, had this new media program. And I probably wouldn't have applied for that if not for Bucks Rock. This place means more to me than I can put into words. And there's not enough time to really do, to tell, give it justice. And a lot of people know that. I'm forever grateful to Ernst and um, Ilsa for having the foresight to provide a camp for those who thought they had everything, but they didn't have much until they got to Bucks Rock. I really hope that they, the next generation of Bucks Rock campers, they get to see what I saw. You know, uh, they, they get to get out their comfort zone. And that's the part where we all grow. I think that Bucks Rock uh, is an amazing place. And for anyone out there who's going, who's planning on going to Bucks Rock in the future, just enjoy it and just enjoy every moment of it. You don't figure it out immediately, it's okay. I spent my first summer in the computer shop playing video games. So it takes a second for some folks and that's totally fine. It doesn't mean you don't belong there. If you're thinking of going to Bucks Rock and you're thinking of what is it that you want out of this experience? I want to get really good at making things out of clay, making things out of wood. I want to get really good at puppetry. Those things are all wonderful, but you're also going to get really good at knowing yourself and how you work. And that is the kind of lesson that is priceless. I never expected after that first summer that it would still be a big part of my life all these years later. So I'm, I'm very grateful for it as a place and its founding story is so special and the people that created it are so special, Ernst and Elsa. Let's find all the people and give everybody the opportunity to be at Bucks Rock so that they can have the life-changing experiences that I had, that my parents had, and that my son is having. Wow, thanks for those incredibly powerful stories. Truly amazing stuff. If it wasn't evident already, this is why we do the work we do and why it's so important to keep on doing it. But what about the work that goes into creating an environment that provides a lasting impact? Well, the work is done by the staff and the campers every day, creating a diversity, equity, and inclusion council, sifting through decades of archival footage to make a documentary, and ultimately preparing our camp for the future. I remember when I was about 14 or so, uh, when my voice started changing, Sybil Simon, the former director of Bucks Rock, told me she liked my voice and that I should maybe do something with it. And sure enough, those words alone sparked my interest to radio. I could stand here all day and talk about how much all that means to me, but I need a glass of water. So I'm gonna let other amazing Bucks Rock folks take over right now. Jeff Oliver and Abby Neath. Jeff is a former Bucks Rock staff member working all across the camp from a counselor in the video shop to a CIT counselor, and easily one of the coolest Bucks Rockers I've ever met. And now he's an incredible writer and filmmaker and works for Open Signal, a media arts center with a focus on community-driven creativity and social change in Portland, Oregon. Abby is a former camper who will be a first-year CIT in either lighting and sound design or weaving. She can't decide which to choose yet. Abby was also a regular visitor at our radio station. I'm, I'm already jealous thoroughly jealous of either lighting and sound design or weaving because we wanted her on radio. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Jeff Oliver and Abby Nee. Hi, I'm Abby and I was a camper for four years and I'm coming back this year as a CIT. Um, I'm here joined by Jeff Oliver and we're going to be talking about Bucks Rock, the documentary that he made and the DEI team. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, yeah, uh, Jeff Oliver. I uh, was a counselor from 2012 to 2018 uh, in the video shop, uh, in the vegetable garden, and Bolivar House, and as a CIT counselor. 
Um, and I'm very honored now to be uh, on the DEI Council, uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, we're a council that's uh, part of the uh, Bucks Rock board, uh, where I, I sit as a board member. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. Abby, what, what shop are you going to be a CIT in? Um, so I'm debating between weaving and lighting and sound design, but I'm going to have to get in my materials by <laughs> the end of the day. Um, but I just, I love, I love the exploration that I've given in both. Um, but for those of us who don't know you, could you tell us about your experience with Bucks Rock? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, like I said, I started in 2012. Um, and it's interesting, I came late. Um, they had an open spot in the video shop. And so I heard about it from a friend who was teaching, uh, was head of clown. Um, and that they needed a person in video. And so I was working a job that I didn't really like and, you know, was intrigued and had heard about uh, Bucks Rock from a friend. So kind of dropped everything uh, and came to Bucks Rock that summer and just had a blast. Like just um, loved uh, working in the video shop, um, making films uh, with kids, with the staff there. Um, had a great summer and then somehow um, just came back uh, for seven more summers. Um, and after my, my second year, I, I started making a documentary about Bucks Rock. Um, and yeah, uh, was interestingly, you know, started in the video shop and got to work in, in a few other areas, got to do some culinary workshops, got to um, uh, work in the vegetable garden when it came back in 2016. Um, yeah, it's got, got to do a lot of fun uh, things at Bucks Rock all over the place. So as part of your commitment to Bucks Rock, you produced a documentary, which was really well done. I really enjoyed watching it. Thank you. Um, so what was that process like? And what are some things that you learned along the way? Oh, I learned a ton. So I started working on that documentary in 2013. So I just worked at camp for my, my second summer. Uh, and I, my first summer, I had been there for the 70th anniversary and my head of shop and video uh, brought out a 16 millimeter um, projector and started uh, showing, it was 1969 footage. Um, and I was just like captivated by it. I was like, oh, this is so cool. It's like somebody came and captured all of the summer of 1969 on 16 millimeter. And he was like, oh, there's a lot more. Um, and then I learned that there's 60 millimeter footage from like 1956 to 1978. Um, so just like this treasure trove of Bucks Rock being Bucks Rock and it, it growing from this little kind of, you know, a, a couple of shops and people milking cows and it being very like agricultural uh, to being like very art heavy. In the 70s, you see what it looked like for festival and it's incredible because they have these huge sculptures on the garden. Uh, and it was just like, it blew my mind uh, to see that. And I, I just got really interested in like, how did this happen? And um, I had only heard a little bit about Ernst and Elsa and the founding of camp. And so it was really just driven by curiosity of, of what my, my own personal curiosity of what, what camp was like and how it got to this way, because um I just saw that that was there. Uh, and so I just started digging and I, I did a Kickstarter and it was originally just gonna be a, it's gonna be a, like an hour long thing, but I was trying to raise $5,000 just to, to pay for, for traveling to see some people and ended up raising $17,000 to, to do a lot more traveling, a lot more research. And I, <laughs> I learned so much about the founding of camp, about um, Ernst and Ilsa, about how, the, this was kind of their, not their first attempt at making an um, educational institution. They'd made one in, uh, in England and they'd worked together in, in Germany before that. Uh, and so, I mean, the amount of things that I couldn't put in this documentary, people always ask me is like, they're a cutting room floor. And like, they're, this documentary could be four hours long or eight hours long with the amount of stuff that I didn't put in. Um, there's just so many beautiful stories in, in one summer. So putting together something that's tries to encompass, you know, 
this summer will be 80 summers. It, it's just impossible to, to encompass all of that. Um, so I, I did the best I can, but it kind of came down to what's the story of how this camp got founded and what's, um, what was kind of Ernst's journey through coming from Austria, going to Germany, um, living through World War II and, and arriving in America kind of in you know place that they never thought they would end up um, and creating this beautiful place that we all love. Right, I, I really enjoyed learning about, like I just felt quite disconnected uh, learning about Ernst and Ilsa, um, just from the namesakes of the new cabins. And like, I understood how important they were to the camp culture, but being able to like really actively learn about it and see what um, Ernst had to say himself was just, uh, it was really, really cool. Um, so you also mentioned that you work on the DEI council. So would you mind telling us um, about the formation and the purpose behind that? Yeah. Um, so uh, in 2020, uh, they approached a few of us to, um, you know, it, Bucks Rock had just become a nonprofit and how can we, uh, you know, change what Bucks Rock has been and you know, move it forward a little bit. And so um, I was approached to, to be on the DEI council along with um, six other people. And, uh, you know, we had a, a few meetings and we're just like, okay, how do we do this thing? You know, they kind of just said, we want to be more progressive. We want to um, move the camp forward. And we think you would, you all who have had a lot of experience in different years, um, how do we do that? And kind of didn't give us any boundaries. They just said like, we want, we want the, you know, to live up to our potential. Um, and so the DEI council kind of started from, you know, with that mandate, what do we do to make uh, Bucks Rock this kind of progressive utopia that we, we all want it to be in. Um, so uh, I was voted in as the first DEI chair, um, which is, is truly an honor. Um, so I lead the meetings, but, you know, it's really, we try to come up with consensus about, you know, we have people who were there in the eighties, somebody who's there in the, in the seventies, people who are uh, more modern counselors. Um, and so we all, you know, have Bucks Rock in our hearts and want to move it forward and figure out what we can do. So, you know, we talk about, um, ADA accessibility is a big thing. You know, Bucks Rock is not ADA accessible uh, at all. You know, it's a pretty rocky hillside. There's some ups and downs. All these shops were built at different times. Um, so, you know, looking at, you know, getting an assessment and, you know, how do we do that? How do we make it accessible for somebody with a wheelchair? Um, you know, because sometimes we struggle with, you know, visitors, you know, how do they get to the bathroom? How do they get to a performance? Um, so thinking about something like that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, one of the first things that uh, the nonprofit and the DEI talked about was a transparent pay scale um, for staff. Um, and kind of that had never been transparent before. So that was something that we thought was really important. Um, we wanted to create a role called the accommodations manager. Um, this is somebody who um, kind of can take in all the feedback from staff and campers about, you know, food allergies, about, um, about any sort of uh, disability or, um, or need to, to, to change um, anything with your living situation or, or going to, to shops and figuring out how we can kind of integrate that into Bucks Rock. Because, I mean, you know, Abby, that Bucks Rock is very like fluid. <laughs> we can change things. Um, and so, you know, integrating that in and, uh, you know, I was a D, uh, I was a CIT counselor uh, my last year as a, as a counselor. And there's a lot of that, uh, you know, that counselors do already that where we, you know, interface with a uh, camper and just try to figure out what they need, you know, if they're not going to shops, if they have a food allergy. Um, so how can we kind of build that in, in a more um, uh, equitable way and just make sure everybody, uh, campers and staff have access to that. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the few, few of the things we've been working on this first year of the DEI. Right. So how does the gala uh, help the DEI council and I guess the entirety of the Bucks Rock community uh, during this transition to a nonprofit organization? Uh, I mean, the gala is, you know, a, a huge um, 
huge, you know, there's never been anything like this in Bucks Rock's uh, history. We've never had a gala before. So um, try, I think trying to connect uh, these generations of Bucks Rockers that haven't been able to go to camp for these last couple of years, um, I think that's a huge thing to be able to see each other, even if it's virtually, is is incredible. Um, and there is kind of the financial imperative of, you know, we're a nonprofit now and uh, we want to change a lot of things, you know, um, trying to become ADA accessible is not free. <laughs> um, so trying to figure out how we can, um, you know, move forward uh, as a physical space as, um, you know, changing these things to, to align with our, our, kind of our heart goals and to make those physical. And, you know, with that, we need, we need fundraising. Um, so I think this gala, um, you know, so many people behind the scenes have done a lot of great work, um, Alex, Antonia. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited for this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you, Jeff and Abby. This program is the sum of our experiences and without input from folks like Jeff and Abby, we wouldn't be able to evolve the way we do and meet the needs of our campers the way we always have. Now I can tell you firsthand, it wouldn't be a Bucks Rock event without some incredible music from an even more incredible Bucks Rock alum. So get ready to celebrate with all of us here at camp. But before that, please remember to donate by clicking donate now in the right panel. Once you do that, you should see a page that says donate now. Click through there and please show Bucks Rock your support. You can also head to bucksrockcamp.org and donate directly there. As a nonprofit, we rely on generosity to continue this work and have been blown away by what we've already seen. And thanks to a very generous supporter of our camp, all donations up to $100,000 will be matched. Again, thank you to everyone who's joined us tonight and shared our resources to support the future of Bucks Rock Camp. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to the music. Please join me in welcoming Sadie Dupuy. Hi, my name is Sadie Dupuy. I play in the bands Speedy Ortiz and Sad 13, and I started at Bucks Rock as a camper in 2001. I played in so many rock cafes and first recording studio I ever set foot in was Studio 59. Uh, eventually, I was a CIT and a JC, and I worked at Music Shed and Pub, and then I was the head of the Music Shed in 2011. Um, and I get to tour all over the world for work. I get to come to cool recording studios like the one I'm trying to quietly <laughs> video from outside of. I wouldn't have done any of that if it hadn't been for Bucks Rock. So thank you to Bucks Rock and thank you to, to anyone who's supporting Bucks Rock tonight. It really is the place that um, made me who I am and I have so many really important friendships still that, that I made t over 20 years ago as a camper. Um, so I'm gonna, you get to have a little video that I recorded in my home studio basement using some stuff, some tricks I probably learned at Bucks Rock. Uh, it's a song called Oops by my band Sad13. And thanks again, I hope everyone has a fun night.
dang, as the host, I don't get that moment to get myself together after a stellar performance like that. But I'm glad you all do at home. Friends, give it up for Sadie Dupuis. Now, we discussed Bucks Rock's transition to a new era a little bit earlier, but now let's dive into the legacy of the camp to show you how it's impacted the lives of its campers for all these decades. As most of you probably know, Bucks Rock was founded by the legendary Ernst and Ilse Bolova, who were refugees from Nazi-occupied Austria. They sought to create an environment where campers could be free-thinking, independent, and empowered to be as creative as they desired, without the pressure of distinguishing between possible and impossible. As Dr. Ernst Bolova once noted, does a poet finish every poem he begins? It's a good question, and in the spirit of it, lives on through generations of Bucks Rock community members, especially our next guest. Please welcome the son and daughter-in-law of Bucks Rock founders, Dr. Ernst and Elsa Bolova, Steve and Ellie. My name is Stephen Bolova. My parents were Ernst and Elsa Bolova, who founded Bucks Rock Work Camp. I grew up in New Milford, Connecticut, and I went to the, I attended the camp from 1947 through 1951, and then again from 1954 to 1957. Our children and grandchildren have all attended the camp, and so we have four generations. And I'm Ellie Bulova. Um, I went to Bucks Rock where I met Steve. I married the owner's son uh, in 1964. I was at camp from 1957, 50, 54 to 57. Um, I had a terrific time working on the yearbook and the newsletter. My father, Ernst Bulova, was born in Vienna, Austria in 1902. After high school, he studied at the University of Vienna, where he later received a PhD in educational psychology. There he met Elsa, and after receiving their teaching credentials, they moved to Berlin, Germany, where they were certified in the Montessori method. They both taught at a Montessori school, and Ernst was put in charge of developing a program for using this method to teach older children. When World War II began, Ernst was sent to an internment camp as a possible enemy alien. He and Ilse contacted relatives at the Bolova Watch Company in New York, which was involved in setting up a camp for British refugee children if the Germans invaded England. Ernst was hired to direct this camp, and we emigrated to the United States in 1940. Land originally owned by John Buck was bought in New Milford, Connecticut, and the camp was built. Now, England was never invaded, and the British children never came. Ernst and Elsa used the opportunity to create a co-ed educational program, which became Bucks Rock Work Camp. Elsa gets credit for insisting from the very beginning that girls be allowed and welcome to do everything that boys could do. This was kind of unusual in the early 1940s when there was a lot of separation between the sexes. So she was um, ahead of her time. So as you can see, Bucks Rock is a community with deep roots, and those roots are still with us today. So we're grateful for the wisdom of people like Steve and Ellie, whose perspective is helping guide us forward. Now to introduce another person who has helped guide Bucks Rock for many years through her enduring presence and lasting generosity, the very proud grandmother of Bucks Rock's current president, Antonia Steinberg, friends, Diane von Furstenberg. Hello, I am Diane von Furstenberg, the proud grandmother of Antonia. And I'm here today to introduce you the fantastic Bucks Rock Camp. Tatiana, my daughter, is the person that discovered the camp. And I feel a little 
guilty that I didn't discover it for her, but she did discover for her daughter, Antonia. Antonia went to Bucks Rock when she was 10 years old and she could not believe it. For her, it was opening all horizon. She loved being a camp. She, uh, she begged to be at camp every year as long as she could be. And when she was no longer in the age of being a camp, she became a counselor, a devoted counselor. And the purpose of tonight is fundraising. Fundraising in order to secure the future of this extraordinary camp that opens the horizon to generations, generation of artists. So I, before I close, I have to say that there's an anonymous family that will match up to 100,000 if you make a donation between 8 and 10 tonight. So I know that the Bulova family would be very proud, as I am very proud of Antonia, as she's very proud of Bucks Rock. And all of us can provide an amazing environment for children who care about arts. Thank you very much and spend the money. Bye. Thank you to Diane von Furstenberg. Your generosity is both awe-inspiring and inspiring, inspiring. We still have some exciting performances and special guests to share, but we really appreciate the support thus far. And just as a reminder, all donations made tonight will be matched up to $100,000. Just hit the Donate Now button inside the right panel, and we have a ton of appreciation for those who already gave tonight. Up next, we want to highlight the bread and butter of our organization by showcasing our campers and alums' incredible talents, as well as their collaborative ability. Here is, if you want to sing out, Sing Out by Cat Stevens, as performed by various Bucks Rock alums, a new collaborative piece celebrating the independent spirit of our whole community.
good. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Doesn't it bring you back to your days at Bucks Rock? Every camper in Stapalama Lake can relate to the energy radiating from your screens. That particular song actually means a lot to me because I remember when they showed that movie at Bucks Rock, Harold and Maud, it had the Cat Stevens soundtrack. So every time I hear that particular song, it takes me straight back. As we enter this new phase of Bucks Rock, the opportunities for campers are only becoming more accessible, more diverse, and more abundant. It's amazing to see. But none of this could happen without amazing leadership. That's why I'm proud to introduce Scott Praterman, director of Bucks Rock Camp. Hi, my name is Scott. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm the current director of Bucks Rock Camp. Bucks Rock has been around for a long time. This is our 80th summer, but this is different. This new version of Bucks Rock marks maybe the most significant change in our history. But while technically we're a new entity of rebirth, a not-for-profit version of Bucks Rock is the next step in getting closer and closer to Ernst & Ilse's original vision. This isn't about building something entirely new. It's about looking back to what our founding principles were so many years ago, a space for adolescents to grow in a non-competitive, independent environment to spend their summers doing exactly what they want to do. And a not-for-profit Bucks Rock opens up that opportunity to so many more people from all over the country and the world, really, to access that vision regardless of their background, location, or price point. Bucks Rock now has the opportunity to expand out, to become bigger, to capture more campers and staff from places that have never been exposed to summer camp or what a Montessori art camp can be for curious and creatively hungry adolescents. I envision this reborn Bucks Rock to still feel like Bucks Rock Camp from opening day through Bastille Day and changeover to tribute show and festival, but represent a camper and staff population that is well beyond what we've been and for the institution of Bucks Rock to expand out beyond the limits of just a summer camp, to become an idea that can set the tone for what progressive Montessori style art education can be for people of all ages and backgrounds. Schools could have a lot to learn from us too, and we're developing partnerships with educational outfits across the country to expand out just what Bucks Rock can be beyond the summer. But it's not just our vision or the board's vision that drives us, but creating a sandbox for the campers and staff each summer to constantly create a new Bucks Rock. One of Ernst's messages that has always stuck with me is about how each summer at Bucks Rock is not about what we did last year. The campers each summer create a brand new Bucks Rock that meets the needs and interests and drive for that summer. That quote, if this is how we did things last summer, this is not what we're gonna do this summer. A not-for-profit Bucks Rock camp is that, but on a macro level. A president and board and leadership team of Bucks Rockers, the vast majority of whom were campers too, that are doing things a little differently to meet the opportunities of the moment and a wider group of people. I've been at Bucks Rock for a long time now. I've been camper, CIT, JC, and staff member in medals, head of sports and CITs, and now director. I've seen Bucks Rock be remade summer after summer. Returning campers and staff each year choosing to make their second or third or 20th summer something fresh and new within a structure that encourages taking risks and stepping outside of your comfort zone and not conforming to anyone else's expectations. After two virtual summers, this is our chance to secure not only the future of a place that has meant so much to us and has been such an important part of who we are, but remake that version of Bucks Rock for the campers this summer and in 2023 and in 2033 and beyond. Personally, I'm so proud to be a part of this team and so happy that I still get to be here at Bucks Rock and be a part of this next step in its history. And with your support, with the opportunity for our alumni and families to be a part of all that, we can take that leap together, publicly serving not-for-profit version of Bucks Rock Camp. Thank you. And before I pass things on to Roger, I can't really speak here without telling a dad joke, so. I got a not-for-profit one for you. So uh, what do you call a not-for-profit public service droid? 501c3 PO. There we go. Thank you. Once again, thank you to everyone at home, all our campers, our incredible staff, our brilliant performers, and everyone else. What a night it has been. And one last time, if you could please click the Donate Now button on the right panel and contribute whatever you're able to, 
It would mean a lot to me, to our amazing staff, and to our wonderful campers. Please remember that your donations are what will help us thrive as we enter this new phase of Camp's life, secure the future of this place, and help spread the magic of Bucks Rock to more people than ever before. As a lifelong Bucks Rocker, I want to tell you how special it was to spend tonight with you all. Seeing the incredible growth of our alumni, sharing in the legacy of the camp, and creating a vision for the future, these things would mean nothing without you all. And thank you for supporting Bucks Rock as we emerge from what's been a huge epilogue into a brand new chapter. Now, before we go, we have one of the best and one of the funniest alumni here to close us out. He's a stand-up comedian, an actor, a writer, and most importantly, a Bucks Rock alum, Mike Kaplan. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Kaplan and I'm so grateful to be here. I'm a stand-up comedian, human being, and longtime Bucks Rocker since as early as I could have been. Uh, I started at age 11 as a camper, worked my way through being a CIT, JC, and C, and now I still get to come back and do workshops of stand-up comedy whenever possible. Like, Bucks Rock is a part of my life, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. The two main things I feel like that I've taken from camp, one is uh, the community, the, the compassionate, uh, generous, gracious, welcoming, uh, the staff and the campers that I, I felt like sort of an outcast in school, that I, I feel like the school year, the 10 months that I was in school, it was like black and white. And then I would come to camp and it was just rainbow colored, just like over the rainbow, through the rainbow, uh, to Rainbow's house we go. It was just so, like, I'd never had the experience of people who weren't related to me being so kind and welcoming and inviting. And I felt like I belonged. And that's the thing that I feel like camp can do is it can teach people, it can reveal to people that, of course, you belong, everyone belongs. And I've taken that everywhere now. And I feel like now I belong, you know, in the universe. And I try to help other people understand that we all, that's true for all of us, even if we don't always know it all the time. Camp was the first place where I truly loved creating, which is uh, the second part of of camp. Obviously, there's the the beautiful communion of the people that are there, and then there's the art that gets created. Like my friend Ari, who I met when I was 12 or 13, his guitar was the first one I ever played. Uh, and I'd, I'd played the violin and I didn't love it because I was made to. And now I was playing the guitar because I wanted to. And I was like, oh, this is, this is beautiful. And I wanted to become a singer songwriter. And I did. And then I wanted to play my music wherever I could. And I, in college, I played at a comedy club, some funny songs. And that led me to become a comedian comedian, which is truly like, I wouldn't be, I don't know who I would be or where I would be or what I would be without camp. The point is, camp is wonderful. I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful to you for being here, for being part of this event, for you contributing your time, your attention, uh, and hopefully, uh, if you have them, your dollars, uh, because it truly can help this whole world uh, continue to thrive, uh, you know, starting starting locally with the Bucks Rock portion of the world. So if you, and I apologize uh, for this final part, and I also don't apologize for it, but uh, because it is what my brain does is if you have, uh, uh, here's the thing, if you can, if you have the means, if you have the dollars, if you can contribute a couple of bucks, that will rock. <laughs>